Hi and welcome to this QuickBooks training video from Tracy Bressler CPA. This is the third in our series of videos on using inventory in QuickBooks. Um, the first video was an introduction to the topic. The second video talked about setting preferences for inventory and creating an inventory type item in QuickBooks, an uh, item that would track costs of inventory and quantities of inventory. So I'm going to assume that you're either familiar with those topics or you have reviewed those videos already. And we have inventory part type items in the company file. And so this video we're going to look at purchasing inventory in QuickBooks. Now there are a couple of different ways to do that. I'm going to take the longer way showing you all of the possible steps and then we'll look at a couple of shortcuts. Your particular procedure may be able to be simpler than this. But let's take a look at all the steps first so that you're familiar with those and then we'll talk about which ones we could cut out if we wanted to. So I'm going to start by creating a purchase order and my vendor is going to be Patent Hardware Supplies and from Patent Hardware let's see I'm going to leave the date and the purchase order number and so forth all this information looks fine to me I'm going to come over here to the item and from Patent Hardware we're going to purchase brass hinges now this is the inventory part type item that we looked at in the last video as far as how to set up an inventory part type item in QuickBooks so we're going to purchase these we're going to say we want uh, 50 of these hinges and we uh, think they're going to cost us three dollars each and QuickBooks wants to know if we want to save that new price that three dollars in the file I'm sorry that's not actually a price that's a cost uh, QuickBooks will use the term price for the selling price and cost for the purchase amount I'm going to say yes go ahead and change that in the uh, item file to three dollars and that creates a purchase order for hundred and fifty dollars now when I save this purchase order, it does not create any kind of a accounting transaction in my QuickBooks company file. It's information only. Uh, no numbers are changed, nothing happens except there's this document out there that tells me that I have 50 of these brass hinges on order from Patent Hardware Supplies. So I will save that. And the question that can come up is, okay, what's out there on open purchase orders that we have not yet received? And in order to find that, I would go to the Reports menu, then to Purchases, and then to Open Purchase Orders. And the last line in this report here is that number 43 purchase order that we just created, $150 from Patent Hardware Supplies. So that's how we would keep track of the open purchase orders that we have in the system. Now, once we receive the shipment, there are a couple of different ways to receive the goods. And again, I'm going to take the approach with all of the steps so you can see how that works. So I'm going to say that there is someone in this company that will be receiving, in some type of a receiving location, the incoming uh, merchandise that we have ordered and that that merchandise will come in with a packing list but it won't necessarily have the invoice from the supplier that invoice will be mailed and that will go to the office and so the packing list that I am looking at as I receive the merchandise may not have the actual cost, I may not be able to see the cost I may not know the freight, I probably would just know what's received and how many of those so I'm going to choose this icon receive inventory and from the two options here I'm going to receive inventory without bill that gives me a form called an item receipt when I tell QuickBooks I want to use patent hardware supplies for the vendor gives me a message that says there are open purchase orders for this vendor and I'm going to click on yes telling QuickBooks I want the, to see those purchase orders I want to choose one of those to create this item receipt. There's the one I just created, number 43. So I will select that by clicking on it and click OK. And with that, QuickBooks will fill in the information from the um, purchase order. So standard uh, brass hinges, we've got 50 of them, $3 each, $150. 
this as the person receiving the goods, this is all the information I have. I know we got 50 of them. I could change that if we only got 35 uh, here, but I'm just going to say we got the whole 50, and I'm going to click Save and Close. Now, the item receipt actually brings the inventory into the system, but in a limited way. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to the Vendor Center, I can look at Patent Hardware Supplies, and actually you see that now they have a balance of $150. It shows that we owe Patent Hardware Supplies $150, and that's from that item receipt that we just did. But if I go to Pay Bills, and I've got the bills set to show all bills and to sort by vendor, so Patent Hardware Supplies would show up right here, but they aren't there. That's because I cannot pay an item receipt. I can only pay a bill. So until that purchase is completed, it will not be available for me to pay. So in order to complete the transaction, the office then has to receive the actual invoice from the supplier. That would be to enter bills against inventory. So I click on that icon, select Patent Hardware Supplies as my vendor, there is the item receipt that we just created. I will click OK. And this is the form filled out, 50 brass hinges for $3 each. Well, you know what? I look at the total on the invoice that came from the supplier, and it's not $150. It's $180. So let me change that to $180. And while I'm at it, I should probably put the number of the bill in here or the invoice from the supplier becomes a bill in QuickBooks. And then down here in the stub portion I'm going to fill out the details. We did get the 50 but we got them for three dollars and ten cents each. And QuickBooks wants to know if we want to update the item record with the new cost. I'll say yes. Now that's just for reporting purposes only. So the next time I do a purchase order it will come up at $3.10 rather than $3. It doesn't really make any accounting change, does not affect the average cost of the item in QuickBooks, doesn't affect anything uh, in that regard. QuickBooks will, will make those uh, changes itself, and it won't ask you if it can. It will just do that automatically. That was just to change the item uh, in the item file so that the next time I do a purchase order or a bill and I use brass hinges, QuickBooks will assume that the cost is $3.10. All right, well, I have some freight to add to this as well. I'm going to add this as an expense. So I'm going to go to the Expense tab. I'm going to use my expense account, Freight and Delivery. $25 is what I paid for freight. That gives me a bill for $180, and I click Save and Close. Now, I still have that $150, or actually, I'm sorry, it's not $150 anymore. If I go back to the Vendor Center, it's now $180 that I owe to Patent Hardware Supplies. And if I go to Pay Bills, that bill is now there and can be paid. So it has to be a bill before it can be paid. If you need a simpler way to receive merchandise, I could go directly to enter bills without going, I could not create a purchase order, could not um, do an item receipt, any of those things. I could just use a different vendor, say I purchased um, from them doorknobs for a total of $349.50 and save that. And that transaction will also bring the merchandise into stock. It creates the same transaction in QuickBooks. I just don't have the information that follows along the different steps as far as is there a purchase order for this item? Has the item been received but yet not finalized because the office doesn't have the invoice from the supplier yet? And those kinds of things. But the accounting transaction is in place. If I save this, I will have those 10 doorknobs from Sloan Roofing. That gives you just a quick look 
at how uh, purchasing works in QuickBooks. Again, a simplified version, but it gives you a starting point. We will have other videos in this series talking about the other uh, functions of inventory in QuickBooks. I hope you found this useful and that it answers some questions that you've got. And uh, please review the other training videos that we have on the TracyCPA.com website. Thank you.